Hi there, folks. Uh, my name is Jade Forrester. I just want to do a quick sound check before I uh, get going. So if anyone is around and can hear me, uh, please feel free to let me know. Um, you can do that either in the chat, I believe, or um, if anyone is watching live and wants to uh, give me a shout out, that would be great. I'll just pause for a second while we make sure that the sound is working. Okay, not sure yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to assume that everything is okay. Okay, well, we are at one minute past the hour, so I'm going to dive right into our introduction. Um, my name is Jade Forrester. I'm the Marketing and Communications Officer here at Mentor, and I just want to welcome you to our first of what will hopefully be many sessions of the Mentor webinar series. Uh, this first session is called Building a Community of Practice Around Prevention. And we'll be joined in a few minutes by Simon Claridge, who is our Director of Programs here at Mentor. Uh, but for those who aren't as familiar with us, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that everything is okay. I can hear a little bit of an echo, so if anyone else is out there uh, listening, uh, I'm just going to kindly ask you to mute your microphones, um, just so that we don't get any background noise in the recording. And I just want to welcome you to our first of what will be many sessions of the Mentor webinar series. Uh, this first session is... Okay, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> All right, so before we dive in, uh, I just want to give a quick introduction to who we are. And uh, that means, one second, sorry about this folks. <laughs> Couldn't find the right window. <laughs> Gotta love that technology. Okay, so a brief introduction to, to Mentor, who we are and why we're doing this. So uh, Mentor is the UK's uh, authoritative voice on uh, prevention and early intervention here in the UK. Um, our goal is to build resilience to risk and promote the health and well-being of young people and children through education, early intervention and the development of life skills. Uh, we do this by bringing together the best in evidence-based research, uh, policy from international sources, and on-the-ground practice to enable young people to develop their confidence and build their own resilience to risk. So we believe that prevention is better than cure, and we believe that early intervention matters, and that taking a life course view of prevention is the best way to avoid small problems turning into huge crises. We believe that our own expertise in drug and alcohol misuse prevention is a vital part of a much bigger picture of prevention, which includes resilience to all kinds of risks, such as mental health problems, sexual exploitation, domestic violence, neglect, abuse, and other manifestations of addiction. Um, we are uh, a small part of a, a much bigger picture that's uh, a really important part of uh, building the, the strength and well-being of young people. Um, so we see it as an investment in, in all of our futures uh, to do the work that we do. So for this webinar, um, we're going to be uh, hearing from, as I mentioned, our Director of Programs, Simon Claridge, um, and he's going to talk to us a bit more about uh, how the work that we do fits into this picture and uh, the importance of building a community of practice around prevention. Um, so Simon, if, uh, if your camera is pointed at you, um, I can't see you right now on my screen, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, the Hangout is working on your end. Um, but I'm going to turn mine off so that hopefully we can uh, get you all set up. So anyone who's viewing, please bear with us for just a moment.
Hi folks, uh, sorry for that quick pause, uh, just sorting out a few technical difficulties. Um, I'm going to be handing the camera over to Simon in just a moment and then he'll be uh, sharing his screen uh, from this computer. It looks like we had a, a little bit of difficulty using multiple machines. Um, so I'm just going to uh, pause again briefly, I promise this one will be brief, and then when we come back, uh, Simon, will be, Simon will be here uh, to talk through uh, more issues around building a community of practice around prevention. Um, just a quick reminder, if you do want to contribute any comments, if you have any questions, uh, we will also be monitoring Twitter. We'll be using the hashtag MWS, standing for Mental Webinar Series. Um, so we'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar. So if you have any comments or questions, let us know through Twitter using that hashtag. Okay, bear with us one moment. Hi, good evening. I'm uh, Simon Claridge. I'm Director of Programs for uh, Mentor. As Jason said, out of um, technical hiccups, we're, uh, we're back and uh, we're cooking, as they say. Um, I'm the Director of Programs for Mentor. It's been my privilege in many ways to be able to work for the organisation for what's going to be nearly uh, four years. And I've learned an awful lot about how important uh, prevention is in terms of the work that we do with young people. At the moment, for us as an organisation, we are dedicating a lot of time to the uh, discourse, if you like, that's happening outside in terms of thinking about prevention in a slightly different context. In many ways, thinking about it in terms of what do we understand about risk and risk-taking behaviours and what do we mean when we talk about resilience and uh, these phrases that we hear. Uh, a lot at the moment in terms of grit and character and uh, resilience. So what I would like to do is just share something uh, with you uh, that I hope will inform your thinking. But the underpinning theory around that uh, in many ways is, is what we're setting out to do is we want to build and develop a community of practice uh, in prevention. And in many ways that's a throwback uh, to my work, I trained as a youth and community worker and have uh, lectured in youth and community work and social pedagogy. And what I've learned uh, from that is actually, you know, we can't work in terms of a banking concept. We can't pour this knowledge into people's uh, heads. Actually, we need to learn from each other. We need to share our, our experience uh, and we need to really think through together uh, the challenges that uh, that we face as professionals, but more importantly, the challenges that young people themselves uh, face as they as they grow up. So, for mentor, in many ways, uh, as an organisation, that is exercising us, and that also is backed up uh, by our mentor Adepis uh, service, uh, which now also hosts uh, Kate, the Centre for the Analysis of Youth Transitions, and I'd strongly encourage you to have a look uh, at Adepis and Kate uh, as a huge repository now of evidence-based programs that have got demonstrable, uh, a demonstrable record, if you like, to demonstrate that they work to greater or lesser degrees because they've been measured uh, uh, against impact. But uh, they certainly have been shown to have a positive impact in terms of working with young people in a variety of contexts, uh, not only young people, children, and, and, and so on. So, yeah, that's uh, a little bit about Adepis and Kate, and it's something that we'll be coming back to as an organisation through this series, and uh, my colleague uh, Jamila will be hosting a webinar shortly, I think, to uh, explore that in a little bit more detail. What I wanted to do, though, was to share with you something about uh, risk, and uh, I'm, I use, people who know me will know that I use Prezi quite a lot, so I'm going to share with you uh, a Prezi that we actually we uh, we presented at one of our um, uh, one of our Adepis uh, seminars. Um, just bear with me a moment. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can uh, that you can see this. Uh, and let's just check that it's working. OK, 
Okay, folks, uh, we seem to have uh, a further technical difficulty, uh, which is that our Prezi is not, uh, not moving, so I'm going to stop sharing it. Can you show me? Okay, so my colleague Jade very, very helpfully uh, sorted that out uh, for me. I need to get a little bit of practice uh, around this. But uh, I'd just like to share this with you, and uh, if uh, anybody is joining us, do feel free to make any uh, comments or observations about this, this uh, very short presentation. So I want us to think about just really just think about risk coping and resilience uh, for children and young people and what we understand about it uh, in the first instance actually let me just go back in the first instance what I want to do is just spend a bit of time thinking about what we mean by the word risk because it's a word that we share uh, quite liberally uh, in in many ways but I think that there's different ways of interpreting it and I think that it's important that we understand risk and the way that we use the word when we uh, think about uh, our work with children and young people and I want to just uh, help that through. So there are risk factors and those are the factors that contribute to poor outcomes for young people and some examples of that might include poverty, deprivation, illness or dysfunctional family relationships. So those are factors that are exposing children and young people to potential uh, risk. But then we have risk behaviour and that applies to potentially harmful behaviour such as unsafe sex, misusing and abusing uh, substances or taking part in antisocial uh, behaviour. And finally what we have is young people at risk and this term is used to refer to those who are potentially vulnerable such as those who are subject to abuse or neglect or those young people in custody or care. So already you can see that there are three ways of interpreting what we mean by risk. And when we think about prevention, when we think about the work that we do with young people, it's really important uh, to consider what it is that we are, uh, what, what it is that we're dealing with. And that in turn leads in many ways to what I think is an important area of thinking which is that we need to begin to think systemically. In, implicit in here, uh, particularly when you look at risk factors, are the homes that young people are living in, uh, the kinds of, you know, the, what they're exposed to in terms of, the, you know, the socioeconomic status, uh, social mobility, so on and so forth. So the family, family relationships, the home is an important part. We need to bear that in mind when we think uh, about the work that we do. And then when we think about risk behaviours, then you can also be thinking about the community and the environment and the things that young people are exposed to uh, outside. And for those young people who are at significant disadvantage and vulnerable, then it's also uh, the lives that they're leading uh, where they're not necessarily in, in, in the home, uh, but are living uh, under, under other terms. So really important to think about uh, risk uh, carefully. And there's something here about the concept of risk as it applies to adolescents. And early studies really tended to focus on just one factor. We tend to think, okay, so if we if we tackle that one particular issue, then uh, we can we, we're going to solve a particular problem. It's become clear now that you can't look at solving any one uh, particular issue. That you have to look at things systemically, and you have to look at the range of factors that cluster and tend to co-occur. Uh, 
So if you have a family of parents living in poverty, then it's likely that there, there are going to be higher rates of depression and so on, mental ill health, as well as uh, being less effective in their parenting behaviour. And that is likely to impact on, on, the, on the young person in a cumulative uh, way. So in the context of prevention and by association PSHE, which uh, we are really exercised by, we often talk about risk behaviours and protective factors. And I hope that the following illustration might help uh, to make that distinction. And what I've used here is the family, uh, is the individual, the family uh, and the community. And I think it helps uh, for us to think in a more systemic way uh, about how we consider risk and young people. So you'll see what looks like a target in the middle. You have, you've got the I for the individual, F for the family, and C for the community. And you can see how they actually wrap around uh, a, a young person. Now this is looking at uh, risk. So individual factors could be the person has an anxious temperament, they have lowered intelligence, poor health, hyperactivity, limited attention span, low frustration uh, tolerance. And there have been studies and there are uh, programs and interventions that look at tackling some of these uh, factors. But then if we look at the family, parental ill health, parental conflict, parental involvement in crime, harsh or erratic discipline, loss of a parent due to death uh, or divorce and disruptive siblings are all likely to add to the potential increase uh, in risk and participation in risk-taking uh, behaviours. And finally, we look at uh, the community. Got to really look at uh, the economic status or, uh, and levels of disadvantage within communities. What is the housing like? What's the quality of schooling like? What are the other services like? Crime rate and levels of substance abuse, lack of community role models, etc. Some of the work that we're doing at the moment as we uh, develop the ADEPIS uh, and Kate uh, arm of, of, of what we do is that we're looking at work, working with schools to help them to really consider. Uh, how they uh, tackle the issue of risk and risk taking and building uh, children and young people's life skills. And one of the things that we really want to look at is what are the communities like that surround schools and what's, what's the impact of that. So we often though use the word uh, protection and protective factors and being protected from risk. What do we mean when we, when we say that? Protective factors work on the more malleable components of development, so the areas that actually can be can, can be uh, uh, impacted upon, uh, and they reflect the different kinds of resources that may help a child to resist adversity. And that's about the emotional, educational, social, and economic influences on the child's life, and operating singly or more usually in interaction with each other. So again, this is putting us in a position where we really need to be thinking about things uh, systemically, we need to be thinking about them uh, in the round, child or young person at the centre, thinking about school, thinking about family, thinking about the community, thinking about the environment. We take our eyes off of those other factors, then we're not seeing uh, a full picture. So let's look now, we've looked at risk factors, let's have a look at some of the protective factors that uh, are likely to improve the chances of young people achieving longer term healthier uh, outcomes. And again, we use the same uh, illustration with the individual, the family uh, and the community. So for the individual, good intellectual skills, a positive temperament, a positive outlook and positive views of self are going to have uh, an impact on uh, their protective uh, factors for that for that young person. In terms of the family, high warmth, so and I often use the word attachment, it's a really important word, family cohesion, high expectations but not uh, unrealistic, and parental involvement in the child or young person's life in a positive sense.
And we look at the community, good schools, neighbourhood resources, such as sports facilities, you know, being able to go swimming, so on and so forth, low levels of crime, strong social networks and adequate housing. So you can see how uh, these factors, how they are likely to uh, improve uh, the protective factors for young people and how you can see them in relation to the kinds of factors that are going to heighten risk. It's important to say here though as well that when we think about risk uh, and risk taking, not all risk taking is negative. You know, there's positive risk that is a, an important part about uh, of how we of how we grow up. Another part of the discourse and the dialogue that we're involved in is, and we use this word a lot, is that you know we talk about coping. Um, we all face challenges uh, and difficulties in our lives, and it's really important to think about well, how do we cope? And often, uh, we a, a key uh, a key element. Of, of how we understand coping and certainly for us at Mentor how we're thinking about it is it's about our ability or young person's ability to call on the resources that they need that are going to enable them to meet the challenges uh, that they're faced with. Now that could be from within the family, that can be friendship groups, that can be school, that can be out in the community, it can be for example, I don't know, going and attending uh, a sports club, going to a boxing club or whatever, being able to talk to other people. But in order to cope, you have to have that sense of self uh, to be able to uh, do it. So coping is a really important element uh, to consider when we think about risk and risk taking. And this uh, Prezi is uh, free uh, for you to have a look at. And I need to acknowledge uh, colleagues at uh, YMCA George Williams College where I do some teaching uh, who've really helped me and informed my thinking about this uh, in terms of what I'm sharing with you uh, today. And finally, resilience. What is it? We've talked a lot about grit and character and so on and it's, it, seems to be, uh, it seems to be everywhere. In some ways it's not entirely different from what we talk about when we talk about our ability to cope because that resilience in many ways is about being able to call on the resources uh, that we need to meet uh, particular challenges. But I've got a few questions here just to pose or for you to think about. Um, is it a personality trait, we think? Is it a process of adjustment? Uh, does it continue for life or are we predisposed to be resilient? Is it limited to a response to a set of circumstances? And these are important questions for us to consider uh, when we think about resilience. I would also encourage you to read uh, one of the briefing papers that we produce, uh, which is currently on our mentor, Adepis, uh, website which explores this in a little bit more detail uh, and also some of the work that we've been doing uh, in collaboration uh, with uh, the Early Intervention Foundation who also looked at this uh, in, in, some, in some detail. So Olson um, 2003 did a review of resilience and made an important point that resilience can apply to both processes and to outcomes, so how we do things and uh, where we end up, but it's essential to keep these two things distinct. So it can be used to consider the types of behaviour, the psychosocial outcomes seen in young people exposed to adversity, but on the other hand, studies that look at processes are more likely to be interested in the way that risk and protective factors interact. And for us uh, at Mentor, we're certainly uh, uh, exercised by that and looking at that interaction uh, between risk uh, and protective factors. So that just brings me to the end uh, of that short uh, presentation about risk. Uh, it's the first time I've done this, so I don't even know if anybody is seeing it, but I hope you find it uh, interesting. Do feel free to look at it. Do feel free to get in touch with me and say, well, do you know what, I'm not sure if I agree with it, or if you disagree, that's, that's what a community of practice is about. It's not about overly criticizing each other, but it's certainly uh, about sharing our learning and our understanding. Uh, and as director of programs and mentor, I'm always really willing and, and happy 
uh, to do that. Uh, so please do uh, have a look, share it, and do come back to me. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing this now here, and uh, hopefully I can come back to my Google Chrome. Right, there we are. Hey, hello, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's fine. Hi guys, so big thanks to Simon for taking us through that. Uh, we're only at about half past the hour, but we're gonna uh, close it off now. We don't need to um, you know, fill this out. If there are people with uh, comments and questions though, always happy to, to address those. Um, I, have, I have been monitoring the, uh, the Twitter stream. We've got a lot uh, of great quotes from Simon getting tweeted out. Um, looks like our, our colleagues in, in Adepis uh, are tweeting out a lot of resources relevant, so make sure you're following the hashtag MWS and you can get uh, access to all those. We've also tweeted out a link to Simon's Prezi as well as to the YouTube version uh, where the live stream is happening right now and where the recording of this webinar will be available immediately afterwards. So if anyone has any comments and questions, I'm just going to check the Twitter sphere one more time to see if anyone is uh, shouting anything out into the void or whether it's just us. So a quick check here. Can't see any questions coming in yet, but feel free to continue tweeting if you haven't been able to join us live and you're watching this at a later time, feel free to continue tweeting using that hashtag, or you can tweet us directly, our Twitter handle is at MentorTweets, you can also tweet directly to uh, the Mentor Adepis handle as well, um, all of that is available in our Twitter stream, again that hashtag is MWS, so I want to just thank Simon again for joining us, that was really great. Um, quick reminder that we will also be here again on Thursday, a uh, slightly different time, we'll be starting at 6 o'clock um, and we have until 7 but we can fill as much or as little of that as we need to and we will be diving in a bit deeper into um, a trial of the Good Behaviour game that Mentor has been funded to lead, um, so I'm just going to leave you with that is all the detail I'm going to give you for now. We will dive in more on Thursday. We'll be sharing more resources between now and then to help you prep if you uh, aren't familiar with the Good Behaviour Game and our work around that project. So with that, I'm going to sign us off, but thank you for joining us, and I will see you all next time.